Welcome back to Star Wars Night of the Old Republic, and today we'll be headed to Manan. In the last episode, we helped Zerka create a permanent foothold in Kashyyyk, and we also found the star map, so we are done in Kashyyyk for now, I think, if not for good. So, let's head on to Manan, and we also have a new character as well, Joey Bindo, but first we're going to talk to Basila and Candace. How can I help? You wish to talk to me? I do. I've been watching you, studying you closely to see what kind of progress you've made since your training at the hands of Master Zar. I think we both know the real reason you've been watching me. You never give up, do you? I admit, I'm interested in you. I find you intriguing, compelling even, but it's not what you think. You have a great gift. You have an awesome command of the Force. And I tremble when I think of how you might misuse it. I make you tremble? Do you get all tingly inside too? What? I, no, of course not. Not like that anyway. In many ways, you are... You are dangerous. You could be the savior of the galaxy. Or you could bring untold destruction upon us all. I've seen you give in to temptation and indulge your baser emotions on many occasions. I'm afraid you are on the path that leads to the dark side. You need to see what the dark side represents in its entirety, for it is what we battle. Only the wisdom of a Jedi Master can truly explain this, but I will do my best to make you understand. I'm gonna do my best to bring destruction to the galaxy, that is. What are you trying to tell me? The dark side is not simply giving in to anger or temptation or to use the force to destructive ends. These things only lead to the dark side. The dark side grows stronger and more insidious the closer you draw to it. It begs you to surrender to it, to release all its terrible power, and it becomes harder and harder to resist. And once you stop resisting, it's too late. It twists you up inside and turns you into a mockery of everything you once stood for. You seem to know that temptation very well. I am no less resistant to temptation than any other. I simply have the benefit of training that you do not. But even the training of the Jedi might not be enough to save us. We need only to look at the atrocities which have been committed by those under its sway to understand the terrible, corrupting evil of the dark side. Millions dead, and far more suffering. What sort of person would you have to become to perform such deeds gladly? Perhaps it's just the reasoning for those acts you don't accept, or are you saying the light side is innocent of killing? One who serves the light does not strike down an innocent. We take arms against the dark side and the injustice that follows it only. It's so easy to think that we would never fall prey to such a horror, that we have unlimited control, vigilance, and foresight. If only that were true. The Sith have become powerful because there are many Jedi who succumb to the lure of the dark side and join their cause. What greater weapon is there than to turn an enemy to your cause, to use their own knowledge against them? We are weakened while they are strengthened, so we must harden our hearts and do whatever is required to fight against the dark side, even when the battle becomes wearying. Do whatever is required, such as... I don't know. The vision of our future is clouded by shadows cast from the dark side. But I sense something ominous lurking in those shadows. But words alone cannot save one from the dark side. Come, we should continue with the task at hand. When the time comes, I only hope we are all strong enough to do what we must. Alright, let's run back and talk to Anders. Get this another war story going on. Yeah, what do you want? I don't have as many strange stories like the last one I told you. But I do have a couple about me and the stuff I've done. In one battle above the world of Althea, <coughs> my unit managed to defeat a force of Althea ten times our own size. That battle gained me command of an entire subsect of my clan.
Tell me the story. For five days, they had managed to hold off our forces, keeping us to the outer rings of their world, preventing us from attacking it directly. My task was to assault one of their flanks with a false attack. The Alfiri would be drawn out by the units I had sent in. Once they had surrounded those units, the bulk of my forces would attack from the rear and defeat them in detail. These Alfiri don't seem too bright. They weren't stupid. Stupid races don't make starships and weapons of mass destruction. But they weren't masters of the arts of war as the Mandalorians are. Things didn't go as I had planned. I saw an opening. A mistake they had made in the disposition of their forces and took it. While fending off our main force, they had let their fleet split in two. The center of their entire fleet was left exposed. I turned my forces and assaulted the center of their fleet, decimating them. What did they do? Their slow, ponderous ship could not turn to face us without being overwhelmed. The command vessels were destroyed in seconds. Their ranks were thrown into chaos. It was amusing to watch the surviving ships scatter and flee. Several even tried to dive through the plane of the rings to escape us. They were shredded by the rings or crashed into rocks or were destroyed by our forces as we pursued them. Warriors do not flee from a battle if they are losing. They fight to the end as we did against your Jedi Revan. Another time maybe I'll tell you about how the war with the Republic went. For now, let's just get on with things. Is there something else you want to know? Your choice. Alright. Now we have Joe Lee as well. And Joe Lee will provide us with uh, He'll provide us with metrics. Well, I suppose I could whip up something with a little few herbs and such. You do know that the best alternative is not to get hurt, right? Well, not to say that you go leaping into the path of blaster fire or anything, but I know how you young people get. Here, take it. All right, now off to Manan. Uh, yeah, Manan's next. Kalonord is dead, Lord Malak. He has failed in his mission. Forgive me. The penalty for failure is death, Admiral Karath. But the failure was Kalos, not yours. You may rise. Shall I hire another bounty hunter, Lord Malak? No mere bounty hunter can stand against a Jedi. I shall not make the same mistake again. My apprentice, Darth Bandon, shall take care of our young Jedi friend. As you command, Master. Alright, so we'll be taking on Darth Bannon here soon, apparently.
felt it yet. Another vision? The Force continues to work through us, showing us the star maps unearthed by Revenant Malak. It is strange that anyone would have built a star map here. The entire surface of Manan is covered by nothing but vast oceans. Maybe the land was once above the surface. It is possible. The melting of polar caps or a cataclysmic earthquake could have buried the land beneath the waves eons ago. Records from that time are incomplete. The ocean floor is vast and much of it is uncharted, even by the native Selkar. But how could Revan and Malak have found their way down? No doubt things will become more clear once we discover the star map's location. Right, let's talk, how can I help? Let's talk to Basil once more. Then I suggest we. And we're not going to do that. So, pass. Figuring she might have something more to say to us, but apparently not. Uh, uh. All right, and we're going to take HK47, high normal, and we're going to take Jolie Bendo as well. I'm not going to be taking Candace this time right off the bat. I'm doing this because Jolie has a side quest in, on this uh, on this world. So, check to see. Do we see foot lockers? It does not look like it. people are so pathetic sitting around groveling at the table scraps the galactic senators deign to give you it makes me sick the senators work for the good of the whole galaxy not for individual gain ha. don't make me laugh you gutless simp it's the destiny of weak-minded fools like you to be ruled over by the strong like we sit i'm warning you don't push me or you'll get just what you're asking for try it just try it I'd love to see you throw the first punch. And with all the cameras around, the cell cat would be all over you inside of 30 seconds. You break their laws. You pay the price, Republic scum. But I can see that you're not mad enough to back up your words anyway. If you ever feel like relieving yourself of your worthless existence, feel free to come by our enclave here. We have many, many ways to fulfill your wish. <sighs> yeah, what are you... Oh, I apologize, Master Jedi. I should not have been rude. Why do Sith upset you so much? Well, these damn Sith are everywhere on Manan, pushing us for public citizens around, trying to goad us into breaking the law somewhere. The Sith and the Republic coexist peacefully well relatively peacefully <laughs> not hardly just look in their eyes you can see they'd like nothing more than to kill each and every one of us personal like they mean well but are misguided <laughs> you're you're joking right the smug hut spawn push us every chance they can get and enjoy it yeah, there's nothing we can do though the Cellcath want to maintain their neutrality and they enforce it very strictly. So we just have to sit here and let the Sith insult us and we can't raise a hand against them. Otherwise, the Republic will face severe Colto export restrictions. And that could lose us the war altogether. Have you seen an ancient star map? A uh, star map? Like an ancient artifact or something? No, I'm sorry, I've never heard of it. Is there anything else I can do for you? Nope, never of mind. Course. Let's go. If you have any other questions, you should probably see Roland Wan. 
He's the Republic diplomat here. He's by the Republic Enclave, near the visitor residences. Oh, if you don't know where that is, go north from here, then south past the port official in the first courtyard, east into the second courtyard, then north, then east again. You got that? Have a pleasant stay, Master Jedi. Why did you decide to come with me? You got yourself a fast little ship. <laughs> I forgot what engine sounded like. The closest thing to that on Kashyyyk is an uller in mating season. Ugh, frightful. So you wanted to ride, wanted to ride on my ship? Or it could be for the free food. What's the gunk that comes out of the synthesizer on this bucket anyway? Do you never clean the darn thing? You don't want to answer to say so. How impatient can one person be? You must have driven your mother mad. All that gurgling and fussing. <laughs> Babies are cute, but annoying. You know, you remind me of someone else I knew ages ago. Pleasant enough fellow, great destiny. All of that, breath like a panther. Did you annoy this person needlessly too? Oh, 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 very funny. Is it my fault that some people are so easily annoyed? Like impatient little children with blasters. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yes. Andor Fix is his name. The force swirled around him like a hurricane. That's how great his destiny was. Is that what you see around me, too? Well, it's not so much a hurricane as a slight breeze. But that doesn't mean anything. Destiny is sometimes in the eye of the beholder. Well, it turned out that poor Andor believed a wee bit too much in the infallibility of that destiny. That overconfidence turned out to be his downfall. Does the story have a point, old man? Well, does it have to have a point? I thought we were just talking about Andor. Something wrong with your attention span. Let's see. Oh, yes, Andor's downfall. I was pretty young myself when it happened. At the time, I thought that Andor's destiny couldn't be more boring. So why didn't you leave? Well, he had a much better food dispenser than you do. That and the fact that even I wasn't an altogether impatient twit. I was just about to abandon Andor to whatever the Force intended for him when his ship was overtaken by a Dimian warship. Now, you've probably never heard of the Dimians, but at the time, they were a nasty lot led by a nastier overlord named Krat. Tall fellow, big teeth. Krat has us hauled onto the bridge of his ship for questioning, and that's when I knew that Andor's destiny was at hand. And go on. Well, Andor decides that his destiny makes him invulnerable and starts making all sorts of demands. Free me now. I'm not answering questions. Blah, blah, blah. Don't you know who I am? Krat decides he's had enough and begins crushing Andor's neck. I told the boy he should have kept his mouth shut. I think he agreed, too. This could have just been gurgling noises. No, no. Anyway, finally, Krat has enough of tosses him aside into this giant energy intake shaft. Andor gets sucked in and starts bouncing around, <laughs> screaming. <laughs> Maybe Andor hit something sensitive on the way down or just didn't agree with the reactor core. Next thing I know, all the ship's alarms are ringing. Everyone panics and I run, barely making it to the ship in time before the explosion. Krat dies horribly and the Dimians Change the political course of the entire sector for centuries to come. I'd call that quite a destiny, wouldn't you? And what does this have to do with you coming with me? Well, hey, the chances may not be great, but when one has the opportunity to see something like that twice in a lifetime. Anyway, go on. My throat is dry and you're making me cranky. Shoo!
sell cap merchant and talk to him later. Mufasa. So the Sith are on the planet, so we have to see what that entails for us at some point. Welcome to Manan. While you're here, I trust you will follow the rules governing the activities of all floaters. Pathetic laws and pathetic fish don't concern me. You dislike, your dislike of us only seems matched by our dislike of you. Personal feelings do not factor into our legal system, however, and all must obey our laws. The single most important law in Manai is very simple. Hopefully smuggling is punishable by death. If you are carrying any unprocessed total, you better have a permit. The other rule is also very simple. Keep the peace. Here on Manan, we maintain a very careful neutrality, and we react very harshly if we jeopardize our neutral status. Any confrontations between the Sith and the Republic are dealt with swiftly and decisively. Is that understood? That's it? Only two laws? Don't be foolish, so as a human. Of course, we have laws against murder, theft, and other crimes, but these laws are hardly different than those of any other planet. Manon's neutrality is closely linked to our cultural production. That is why I made special mention of the laws regarding smuggling and keeping the peace. I understand. There's a docking fee of 100 credits. You will have to pay this fee each time you dock on Manon, or you will not be permitted into Ato City. I don't need to pay the docking fee. Ah, yes, yes, you do not need to pay. The Jedi Council wouldn't approve, but they always were a little stodgy about using the Force on people. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Otter City is open to you. You may come and go as you please, so long as you do not leave the planet. If you do, you'll have to pay the docking fee once more. Okay. So you think, or I'll just force persuade you again. Alright, so we're going to go to the left first, or right if you look at the map. Save your empty threads, Sith scum. Malik isn't stupid enough to attack the core worlds. Now with the entire Republic fleet waiting for him. You're a fool. When the Sith descend on Coruscant, our numbers will block out the sun itself. The galactic senators will collapse trembling in fear and beg for mercy at Malik's feet. You underestimate the Republic's resolve. We'll die before we surrender Coruscant. That can be arranged. Remember what happened to Taris. Malak could do the same to the core worlds. He wouldn't dare. Now it is you who underestimate our resolve. Why do you bother me, human? I do not wish to speak to you. Why are you standing here in the corner? I am here for my own reasons. Those who know of me and wish to do business know I can be found here. You will either do business with me or leave. 
business. I trade and sell cards. Alright, I'm not interested. Human, there are self cats everywhere, but you choose to speak with me. Am I so different? Do you not think I answer? Do you think I have answers that others do not? That's a rather strange greeting. These are strange times. It's like the Republic battles to control the galaxy, but their war destroys what they both seek to possess. The war styles fear, so is fear and confusion. People are lost. They want guidance, direction, and have they have questions and they want answers. That is why I'm here. I too seek answers. Answers to what? Or who are you? A name, there is power in names, yet in the end, a name alone means less than nothing. I am Hulas, a traveler from the world of Euro. And what is your name, human? My name is none of your business. You presume to know my business, human, yet if your name becomes important to me, I only have to check with the self cat registry to know it. For, but for now, keep your secrets well hidden if you wish. What is it you want with me, human? Nothing. I'll be going. Okay. We're going to keep going to the uh, east. Get Jolly Bendo's quest started and done, hopefully. Only. You gotta pay a 20 credit toll to walk down this street. You can have your credits when you take them from my cold dead hands. You talk big, but remember what we did to Taris. Maybe you're next on our list. Well, good for you. This is it. This is a swoop res registration. That's, a, that's the wrong way. So I'm going to keep going to the east. Or, well, I guess it's not even the east now. Just we keep going left, essentially. It's north now, though. Yorkel's Emporium. You got any armor plating for my swoop bike? <laughs> yes, I have a fine piece right here. A little density, but still serviceable. And a real, at a real bargain price. Oh, I thought this garbage was free. You actually sell this junk? You fish are a strange breed. Get out of my store. I'm sick of you sick and your stupid jokes. I got real customers to worry about. I don't need you coming in here and making fun of my inventory every day. Don't worry, junk man. When I want garbage, I'll be back. Are you here to mock me as a Sith or do you actually want me to buy something? Watch your tone, or you'll be looking for some replacement limbs. I suppose I deserve that, but you'd be bitter too if the Sith kept coming in and making fun of you and your inventory. Let us forget the unpleasantness and start our meeting over, yes? Welcome to Used Goods Store of Yoro Ixel. Let me look at your inventory. I don't think there's going to be anything here that I need or want. Yeah, there's not. Hey, you got some dark side points. Nice. And then this is going to be the Sith Enclave, which means I went the wrong way. So, let's go 
that will solve this series episode. Only people who have business with the Sith are allowed inside the embassy. I have business with the Sith. Ha! We know who we have business with. If you don't know how to get in, then we don't want anything to do with you. Now back off. I'll be going now. Go. Then. Stay. Doesn't matter to me. If you want to, you can even wander up to the embassy gate. <laughs> but don't expect to get inside. All right. So I want to go back to the start and go the opposite way this time. Instead of going left, we'll go right. Distribution center. Nothing to see in there. Eventually we're gonna run into here we go. Jody, did you see you? I I need your help. And Laura, of all the people, how did you even know I'd left Kashik? I didn't. Nobody knew where you were, not even Sunrin. But I heard the Selkaf mention you and your friends. The force has brought you to help us. Why? Whatever could be the matter, my dear? Oh, it's horrible, Jolie. Sunri has been arrested. The Sith have accused him of murder. Murder? But how? It's all a mistake, Jolie. Sunri isn't a murderer. Someone is trying to frame him. Calm down, Elora. Where's Sunri now? Sunri's being held at the Selkath courts. They won't let anyone in to see him. Please, go to the courts. Talk to the judges. Maybe the Selkath will listen to you. Don't worry, Elora. We'll get to the bottom of this and help Sunri. Somehow. Well, we'll get to the bottom of it. Whether helping is uh, to be determined. The Republic respects the peace of Otto City, Your Honor. But the Sith are a violent people who leave violence in their wake. I have three soldiers in the infirmary. If the Republic's soldiers were more capable, they would not have suffered such serious injuries. Are my soldiers to be punished simply because they won a fair fight? I hardly call six against three a fair fight. The Sith are cowards who attack only when they have the advantage of numbers. I am aware of the Republic's indignation. However, witnesses report clearly stating the Republic soldiers were as willing to engage in violence as the Sith in this case. They were provoked, Your Honor. The Sith goaded them into this fight. Taunting threats are not sufficient provocation in the eyes of this court. Words can be ignored, which is what your men should have done. I find both the Republic and the Sith to be equally at fault for this breach of the peace. I should throw all parties involved into Otto City Jail, but since no Selkath were harmed in this conflict, I will show mercy and levy a fine of 10,000 credits on both sides. The court is dismissed, though I warn you that further disturbances will not be viewed with such leniency. Okay. 
Sounds to me like you just want cash. I'm Judge Shelkar, acting on behalf of the Shelkath government of Manan. It is my task today to answer the needs of all the citizens of both the Republic and the Sith Empire. If you have legitimate grievances with another party, then you should speak to me. You should first, however, consult with the Republic Embassy before pressing formal charges. Is there something you wish to bring to my attention? I'd like to investigate the murder of involving Sunry. That is acceptable, I believe. In the non-legal tradition, the defendant can have an arbiter who tries to prove his innocence in court. This arbiter is a neutral party that can investigate and present evidence in the trial and argue on the defendant's behalf. As you are a Jedi, I believe you can fulfill this role adequately. I suppose you're Sunry's only hope. We have to at least try to help him. So be it. You are now appointed arbiter in the case of Sunry versus the Sith Empire. Your name and position have been recorded in our files. I will now inform you of the pertinent facts of this case. We have a limited amount of time in which to investigate and organize the defense of your client, and I advise you do it. You to use it wisely. Sunry was seen leaving a hotel, leaving behind a dead Sith woman, Elasa Heroes. He has been charged with murder and is being held in the Odyssey prison facility. Due to his crippled status, he is being kept in a solitary holding cell. Witnesses claim to have seen the killing and are being detained at the hotel in question, pending the trial. The manager of the hotel has now been informed of your appointment. Elasa was found dead of a blaster wound with incriminating Republic medal clutched in her hand. This information has been uploaded to your data pad. It would be wise to review all information before the trial starts. You may question Sunry or the witnesses. The evidence in this case is heavily stacked against Mr. Sunry. I believe it will take some doing to absolve him of guilt. Yes, but it almost seems too heavily stacked, doesn't it? Very suspicious. You may also interview the judges here, including myself, to get an idea of the pertinent factors in this case. Since this is also your first case, you are an off-roader. I feel compelled to add good luck as my final missive. Okay, so let's go and talk to Sunry, wherever, they, wherever he is. It should be over there. You may come and go as you please, Arbiter. You will find the door unlocked. You will have, if you wish to begin the trial, you must make a request with the warden. It should then be passed on to the judges. Where are you at, Sunry? Jolie, what are you doing here? The lore sent me, Sunry. I'm here to get you out of this mess. The courts went and made us arbiters for your case. Just like old times, eh, Jolie? You come swooping in out of nowhere to save my tail from the fire? You saved my wrinkle butt more than a few times as well, friend, if I recall. But there'll be time for catching up later. Right now, we need to focus on the case. The case is a complete frame-up. Anyone looking at the evidence could see that. Or so I thought. But the Cellcats seem to think that there's... Well, that there's enough to go to trial. There aren't any witnesses. All that evidence against me is circumstantial and completely flawed. There's a few things we have to clear up. Go ahead, ask. Ask what you need to. I've got nothing to hide. How would they know? They weren't there. I heard some of the witnesses said that too, but I swear she was alive when I left. I wonder if the Sith have been putting pressure on people to get them to convict me. It wouldn't surprise me at all. They've had it in for me since the war. You should ask everyone about that. They might admit to helping the Sith under pressure. I guess you could interview witnesses at the hotel where the murder happened. The Selkath already did that, but the fish folk don't have much rapport with off-roaders. Maybe one of them was holding something back. But I think you'd be better off investigating the Sith themselves. Maybe you could find some proof they planted evidence to frame me. Though that might mean figuring out a way into the Sith embassy. 
anything else I can help you with, I want my Arbiter to be well prepared before we go to trial. I'll be going. Very well. I suppose there is still much you must do before the trial. Once you've gotten enough evidence to go to trial, just tell the warden we're ready. The sooner I get out of the cell, the better. Alright, so we need to find this hotel. Which I'm not 100% sure where it is, if it's on this map or not. It might be. Human, I wish to speak to you if you have the time. Greetings, human. My name is Elias. I have heard it said that you are no friend of the Sith. Is this true? Actually, I kind of like the Sith. They've got style. If you like the Sith, you are obviously not the person I am looking to complete this task. What task? I'm sorry, human. You have made your relationship with the Sith quite clear. I have no further business with you. It was a joke. Yes, a joke. I was mistaken. Your words are strange, human. You claim one thing, then the exact opposite. Perhaps this is what your species calls humor. If so, it appeals. Its appeal eludes me. However, I believe you now speak the truth about your dislike of the Sith. Though I suspect we have little in common, human, I share your dislike for the Sith. They have brought grief to my family. I'm not a fool. I know the Sith do not respect our laws as the Republic does. Were it up to me, I would do everything in my power to aid the Republic in the war against Malik. But intergalactic policies stay in my hand. Still, I know the Sith are evil. I don't fear what they will do with, to my people and what they may do be doing now. Just get to the point, Shalus. Many of the Selkath have vanished, you know. Most who have gone missing are, the cusp, are on the cusp of adulthood. The youth who will someday leave this planet, my own daughter, Sasha, is among those who have disappeared. His disappearance coincide with the arrival of the Sith, and I cannot dismiss the connection. The Sith are up to something human, something sinister. I can feel it. Send this for me. I'll give you 500 credits and you can uncover the fate of my daughter and the other missing Selkath youth. Not much, but all I can afford. I have no official authority in this matter, and my personal wealth is not vast. There is no one else I can turn to when the Republic agents are too closely watched by the Sith, and the awful authorities cannot act without proof of Sith involvement. Uh, I'll look into them. Maybe the offerors in the mercenary enclave know something. Learn anything you can report back to me at once. If you uncover the fate of my daughter and the other missing self I will reward you as promised. Okay. We might have a position within the Sith organization for one such as you. Your offer is pretty good, but I've heard some nasty things about you, Sith. Is it true you bomb Taras into dust? This is war. In war, certain distasteful acts cannot be avoided. But ask yourself this, when we win the war, would you rather be against the Sith or with us? You make a good point. And I've never turned down a job that pays up front. Excellent. Report to the Sith Embassy tomorrow for your assignment. I have no desire to speak to you. I know you have links to the Republic. Okay. What do you want, Nilko? I hope you're enjoying yourself. Cut the small talk. What do you want? You are blunt, human, but it is, that is perhaps what I require. There's a task I would ask you, Jedi. I fear there is nowhere else I can turn. What do you want me to do? Ample reward. I only require information, nothing more. The Republic has been hiring mercenaries more than usual. As an official of the Selkath people, this is of great concern to me. I only seek the reason for this change in the Republic's policy.
what's in this for me? Tell me the truth, they're about this action, and I'll pay you five. Be careful, there, kid. Start poking your nose in a place that doesn't belong, and you might not like what you find. See if you can find the answers I see. I'll do it, but only for the money. Once you have the answers I see, I'll gladly pay you the 500 credits as promised. Alright, so now we need to find the hotel. But that's what we're going to save for the next one. So I hope you're enjoying this, uh, and I will see you in the next one when we go to the hotel to investigate Sunri's murder trial. Peace.